While working on this investigation, Tamar al Mishal saw many signs of hacking attempts on his phone, the one he had fitted out to track any infiltrations. After seven months, on the 19th of July 2020, he received a phone call from Citizen Lab informing him that the phone had been hacked. The hacking happened a few days after he had aired an investigative documentary about an Indian tycoon, which disclosed controversial leaked documents about the tycoon's link to the UAE and his flight from that country. Al Mishal had used the same phone to communicate with officials and individuals in the UAE in order to give them the right to reply to the allegations in the film. So the first thing that we saw on your phone was on July 19th, between about 10.33 and 11.28 a.m. GMT, there were a very high number of connections to Apple servers. Now, usually your phone will just communicate with one Apple server for iCloud, for your backups, for your contacts, syncing the information. But in this case, in less than an hour, we saw your phone communicate with 18 different Apple servers. And this was very unusual. You don't usually see this on phones. So that was the first clue that something suspicious was going on. And immediately after this communication stopped, we saw your phone reach out to this website, regularhours.net. In other words, your phone connected to this website. And this website stands out because we know from our research at Citizen Lab that regularhours.net, this website, is linked to NSO Group's Pegasus spyware. So we saw your phone reaching out to this NSO Pegasus spyware server, which led us to suspect and then later conclude that your phone was infected. So what we can see from the recording of your internet traffic, so let's go to this point in time here, uh, 1129, where the phone communicates with the Pegasus server. And we can look beforehand to see what was going on immediately before that. And the only thing that we see is this communication with uh, iCloud, with Apple servers. Uh, we don't see any evidence that you pressed on a link or clicked on anything or went to any website. So what we think happened is that these communications with the Apple servers delivered the initial exploit to hack your phone. In other words, you didn't click on anything, your phone was automatically hacked, a so-called zero-click, like we say. Zero-click exploit delivered through Apple servers. This is a very expensive exploit, yes. This is, if you think about uh, the sophistication of exploits to break into phones, this is as good as it gets. Zero click means hacking without clicking on any links. Pegasus does not require any action by the user or a click on any suspicious links. The user receives a call from an unknown caller through the internet and the phone gets hacked even without answering the phone call. After that, Pegasus spyware is installed on the targeted phone, taking full control of the device. Well, it's definitely the most sophisticated attack I've seen in the last few years. The fact it was able to be installed on a target's device without the target even clicking on anything. So a zero click attack. This is incredibly impressive. And like I say, very rarely seen. To be able to do that, it's so sophisticated. But as it is rare, it is difficult for us to, to really know much more about it. If something of this magnitude was able to be conducted to steal such data, this is a bit of a worry. Tamar al Mishal wanted to know if the zero-click process enabled complete access to all the applications and content on his phone. As far as we know, they can access everything on the phone. We saw from looking at the log files on your phone that they were able to access the media framework, so they were able to turn on the microphone, turn on the camera if they wanted to, and listen into meetings or conversations going on around your device. Uh, they were also able to tap into the keychain on the phone. This is where your passwords for email accounts, social media may be stored. The fact that Citizen Lab was tracking Tamar's phone helped him take precautionary measures to prevent sensitive information being accessed. The most important thing 
was for him to discover the moment the hacking took place and who else was affected. Well, what we found working together with Al Jazeera's IT team is that your case was not the only one. There were at least 36 other cases inside Al Jazeera of phones that were communicating with servers that we linked to NSO Group's Pegasus spyware. In other words, there were many different people at Al Jazeera who were hacked and targeted, not just you. 